Greetings, the Astro 30 here, and today I got a pair of, uh, well, I suppose you'd call them bookshelf speakers. Uh, they're about that size to sit on a bookshelf. They're made of a reasonably decent wooden cabinet here. Uh, I believe it to be plywood. Now, I paid $10 for the pair, and there's a very good reason for that. And ironically, the guy in the uh, tip shop, uh, recycling shop, said that if there was a problem with these speakers to bring them back within the next couple of days. That was kind of ironic because there is going to be a problem with them today. A big problem. Because I'm going to blow them up. I mean the cabinet itself is pretty decent. There's a cobweb in that one. It does look to me to be like plywood. I could be wrong, but Basically, this video is about why it is bad for DC to be present on a speaker. Now, I really need to get this cabinet carefully open because, well, if I'm going to destroy the speaker driver, that's, that's just, that's a given. But I want to keep these cabinets because I will probably put some decent drivers in these. I believe them to be around about, you know, maybe 7 inch, 8 inch. So... I'm going to carefully take this back off, I stapled, and I hope it's not glued because it's going to be awfully difficult to get it off without destroying it. I suppose first might what be a good idea is to actually see if these speakers actually work at all. Uh, so, got a 9 volt battery, which is probably contradictory to the title of the video here. Oh yep, yeah, that one works. Looks like it's got about a decent amount of bass too. And the second one. Oh yep, yeah, they work. So, in order to get this off, it is glued by the looks of things. I might be able to prise it off. I mean, I only pay $10 if I wreck the cabinet. I'll wreck the cabinet. I need to get a little bit creative. I'm not having it. Where's my hammer? Now... You know what? I'm beyond caring at this stage. Yeah, no, nah, it's only chipboard, so it's really no great loss. Uh, oh wow. Well, that's interesting. It's a Magnavox speaker, which is made in Australia, and apparently it's 15 ohm. And that screw seems to be loose and not actually tightened to anything. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to pop that... Uh, I think they came off of one of the clips. That'd be one of those. I mean, look how piss poor this construction is. Well, the other one's there. Fuck if I know what that one's for or where it came from. Yeah, this is a pretty bad construction of cabinet. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> I just realized what these holes are for. Therefore, so you can put a screwdriver through to take the screws out that hold the front panel on. So I didn't actually need to do that. Oh well, doesn't matter, they were crap anyway. I'll probably end up uh, rebuilding those speakers and busting the other back off and uh, replacing it with something a little bit more substantial. and. Um, yeah, might make a video of that and replace these drivers with decent ones because well, I've got no real use for 15 ohm speakers. That, that's, well, you might as well say 16 ohm. Yeah. I mean, look, look how crap 
a design this speaker is. This is like from the 70s. It's got to be. I haven't seen Magnavox speakers in years. A bit of crap in there. Anyway. So, why is DC bad on a speaker driver? Well, let's look at how a speaker driver works. I've got my 9 volt battery again. And I'll just hook it up across the driver. Notice, however, every, every time I apply a DC voltage in that direction, because remember DC is direct current and speakers are designed for alternating current, the speaker sucks in a bit. Now if I reverse the polarity, notice how it is pushing out now. Ooh, that was me, not the speaker. So putting DC on a speaker will cause the cone to either move outwards pretty hard or move inwards pretty hard. And that over time will actually damage the excursion of the speaker or suspension. And you can possibly crack what's known in down here as the spider. That uh, brownish colored ribbed thing is known as the spider. Okay, this animation is quite a good demonstration of how a loudspeaker physically works. Here on the left we can see the surround, in this case it's a rubber one. That's attached to the third piece here which is the cone, which is usually made of paper, some are polypropylene, and I actually have seen metal ones before. And in the center of the cone is glued a dust cap. All that does is what the name suggests, it stops dust going down into the magnet down here. The cone is attached to this round donut shaped uh, ribbed device known as a spider and that's basically the spring if you like of the speaker. The spider is actually attached or glued to the inside of the basket here in the center and the cone is also attached to the spider and glued to the suspension which is also glued to the basket. The former which is usually made of cardboard is glued through the spider into the cone just inside the dust cap and then we have a voice coil of very thin copper wire wound around the former and then it is passed through a magnet and a pole. So as we can see with this diagram if we apply a positive or negative voltage in alternating current to the coil, it'll move in and out of the permanent magnet plus the pole piece on the inside. This side is north and the pole piece is usually south. So this electromagnet is moving in and out like that in time with the frequency that's applied to it, pushing the cone in and out at the same time and rate which is also mounted to the suspension to the basket and it's pushing the air on the outside plus also pushing the air on the inside. And this is why speakers sound better and have richer bass when they're actually mounted into a cabinet rather than in open air because it's all about resonance. And actually resonating the air inside the cabinet gives it its bass or tonal quality. But that is basically how a speaker works. That's one reason why you shouldn't put DC on a speaker. The second most reason is because it's direct current and the speaker is being pushed out or pulled in, depending on the direction of polarity, um, even 8 volt DC across an ATOM speaker is equivalent to 1 amp of direct current going across it. And most voice coils aren't designed to handle that amount of current going in a single direction. And, and these can actually catch on fire. Now this is 15 ohms, so we'd need 15 volt in order to get one amp across it. Without any further ado, let's hook this up outside to a power supply and see what happens when we apply 15 volt DC across it. All right, ready to go. Got the power supply hooked up. I'm going to turn the light on. I'm going to slowly ramp the voltage up because I don't want to apply 15 volts directly across it straight away. It just might pop it instantly. So I'm going to slowly 
crank voltage up. Well, that wasn't very spectacular, was it? Well, that was disappointing, but we did get a bit of smoke coming out of it. But I was hoping for fire. So, well, this speaker is now done for. This is like a fabric. Coil doesn't look like it's caught on fire. It is stuck in the magnet. Uh, yeah. yeah, I just think it. But you can see how thin this copper wire is. It's pretty thin. So, yeah, applying one amp direct current across that at 19 volts, it won't last very long. Uh, however, I'm still disappointed that we had no fire. However, fire we're going to get. Now if that had been a higher powered speaker, that is possibly what could have happened to it if uh, the coil didn't blow first or go open circuit and it was con allowed to continue to smoke it would have eventually caught on fire and if that was mounted in a wooden cabinet like it was before it would have set the wooden cabinet on fire and therefore would have set your house on fire so that's why DC on a speaker is very bad Mmm, you hear that sound? That's the sound of your life sucking if that happens. Anyway, that was fairly disappointing. I actually had to set it on fire. But, you get the point. If that had been a higher power speaker, that could take a lot more voltage going into it than what I put into it. Um, yeah, it probably would have been a little bit more destructive. But, now I have to dispose of this speaker thoughtfully. Bye bye. I'm the Astro 30 and as always if you like this video please remember to rate, comment and subscribe below and you can always follow me on Facebook and Twitter, the links are in the description as usual. Anyways this is the Astro 30 saying see ya, have a great day and I'm not your Darlington.